At this time, I'll call the June 17th, 2021 meeting to order for the Dixon County Commission. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I'll go ahead and call for approval of the agenda, but first we do have some additions. Uh, first, we're going to add to the agenda a proclamation to declare June as Elder Abuse Awareness Month for consideration. Uh, also to consider a resolution for Dixon County to participate in the state of Kansas Rural Opportunity Zone Program. And then the third one is the application for real estate property tax relief. And with those additions, I would move that we approve the amended agenda. I'll second it. We have the motion that I've made and the second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the June 3rd meeting, also fund expenditures of $1,926,903.28, wire payments, which include the SD security payment of $3,384, credit cards of $19,020.46, utilities of $9,025.75, abatements, $2,369.52. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and second for approval of the consent agenda. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Commission comments, Ron? I spent a little bit of time in, uh, uh, up north at the Juvenile Detention Center in Concordia yesterday. Things are going quite well. Uh, they're prepared to make some adjustments as we go on as far as inmate numbers and things like that. But the facility is operating great. They did make one change in trying to retain the employees and recruit new employees by giving them a sign-up bonus to the to the new people that are coming in that are interested in like jobs at the detention center and also those that refer those people to come in will get a, a bonus also so that's a new thing that they kind of started with see if they can retain some people and bring some people in for employment that's it okay greg uh yes uh, last week when we did meet uh, brad and i attended the kcca conference the liberal um uh, very good conference uh the, Gentleman, I can't think of a budget person from Butler County gave an excellent presentation on the net neutrality. Oh, Ryan. Ryan, yes. Uh, then the Department of Revenue or Department of Taxation gave an excellent. Uh, David Parker. Yes. Oh, see, I'm, all I, did, <laughs> I, I can't remember. I can't remember the names. The director of PBD. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was a good. Good. I thought for location, uh, eighty some plus was there, so I thought it was well attended by the county commissioners. I know Gary County, they had two commissioners there. I did get an email that I'm, uh, we did meet last week, and this is from uh, Abby Mays. Uh, we spoke about it in the work session, and this is Dear County Commissioners, I have no other choice but to write this email to you today. I reside in Harrington, Kansas, and enjoy going to the lake deeply. However, in recent times, there, there have been countless times when children have almost been hit and cars speeding down the road. I had gone to city commission about this to enforce something, but they say it's the county. I'd really appreciate it if you could get the county commissioner to respond to my email or give me a call to further discuss this issue. It is an unsafe situation for everyone at the lake. And Brad mentioned that the new city manager, city manager there, talked to the sheriff. Please, Chief. Please, Chief. Let's talk to the our sheriff, and there's going to be an increased presence down there. That's correct. correct. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Um, this past week, I did attend a fundraiser. It was for the Ashby House, and the Ashby House works with domestic violence yeah. and some other issues to provide some housing, but also to try to get people back on the right track. And it is a regional type house, even though it's located in Sling County. Um, and then also this past week, there was a town hall meeting 
Senator Jerry Moran was at the Rotary Club, but then it was also opened up to the general public uh, and he gave us an update, but also there were quite a few questions um, that came about. So um, uh, he, he, he was on a listening tour and he had a, a good chance to listen. So um, that's all I have. We'll go ahead and move on to proclamations. And we do have one proclamation today. And so I'll go ahead and read that. This is Elder Abuse Awareness Month, whereas according to the National Council on Aging, one in 10 seniors in America experiences mistreatment or abuse, including domestic and sexual violence, financial exploitation, neglect, and whereas abusers of older adults are both women and men and are usually family members, caregivers, health workers, or other trusted individuals, and due to the shame, fear, and other barriers, elders face in reporting abuse, only a limited number of victims are able to get help they need. And whereas elders throughout the United States lose an estimated $2.6 billion or more annually due to elder financial abuse and exploitation, such as illegal taking, misuse, or concealment of funds, property, or assets of a senior for another's benefit. And whereas too often elder abuse threatens the livelihoods of older individuals erodes their extraordinary potential and increases their risk of death by 300% compared to seniors who have not been mistreated. And whereas Dickinson County's vulnerable and older adults of all social and economic, racial and ethnic backgrounds may be targets of abuse, neglect or exploitation, which can occur in families, long-term care communities and medical settings. And whereas we all have a responsibility to support the safety, welfare, and dignity of vulnerable and older adults and must work towards ending elder abuse by assisting victims in assessing the information and supportive needs they need, creating better and more resources for older adults in need, instituting effective intervention and prevention policies and engaging in discussion with family members and peers to promote awareness and prevention of the quiet epidemic of elder abuse. Now, therefore, the Dickinson County Commissioners hereby proclaim June 2021 as Elder Abuse Awareness Month in Dickinson County and urge all citizens to work together to help protect elder adults from abuse, neglect, and exploitation because it is imperative that we refuse to tolerate the indignity of elder abuse. Be it proclaimed this 17th day of June 2021. Is there a motion to adopt this proclamation? I'll make a motion to adopt the proclamation. I'll second it. We have the motion and the second to adopt the proclamation on Elder Abuse Awareness Month, June 2021. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And this needs uh, signatures of all three commissioners. And Tanya Paul with BVAC is online if she wants to make oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had joined us online. So oh, that's okay. please, yes, if you'd want to um, identify yourself and kind of your uh, position and promotion of this proclamation. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. A little bit louder, maybe. Okay, um, my name is Tanya Paul. My title, I'm an outreach specialist for DVAC. Um, I provide outreach services to various types of victims. Um, June is Elder Abuse Awareness Month. Um, it, this is a population in which um, I, I think we don't see the numbers. Um, we do, do serve elders, which is 60 and above. Um, we provide a, a wide variety of services, whether it's safety planning, um, court advocacy, hospital advocacy. Um, we have our safe shelter located in Salina. Um, and then part of my job too is just raising awareness in regards to violence, um, providing uh, proclamations, uh, educational presentations to community groups, that kind of thing. Okay, well, thank you for joining us and thank you for your work. And I know there's many challenges and um, we hope proclamations like this create some awareness and remind us. Um, thank you for the service you provide. 
Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, we do not have any other proclamations. We're at the portion where we do have public comment. If someone would want to make a comment on any item that is not on the agenda. Um, Today, what we'd ask them to do, Lynn, is just there's a check mark to raise their hand. Okay. The new software is in place today, so if they want to raise their hand on the software and then we can acknowledge them, turn them on. Okay. And I know sometimes we do have people that join us online um, that maybe do not have questions but just want to listen in on the meeting. And then also on these meetings, they are recorded where a person can go back and and look at the meeting after the fact, and it is online uh, from the previous meeting, but also several meetings back. Okay, I don't believe we have any public comments, and so we're gonna go ahead and move to the next item. And that will be our report of county officers. And so Brad Hammond, if he's, is our county administrator, if you'd have your comments at this time. Okay, we've got quite a bit here since we haven't didn't have a meeting last week, and I concur with what Craig said. I thought the conference was very good out of liberal very well put together and the topics were excellent. So you can't always say that coming away from some training like that, but. You might mention too that they've asked us to host it. Yeah, they did, uh, Dan Wajak from Butler County as, uh, as the president of the organization did mention to me at one of the, one of the uh, breaks that we, they'd be looking for a place next year to host it. Want to know if Abilene would be interested in hosting. I told him absolutely, for Dickinson County. And uh, that we could discuss that if the board so chose, so maybe an option. We wouldn't have to drive near as far that way. So, uh, start out, uh, we did, I think I reported to you a while back that we had applied for a .gov extension for our emails and our website. We were approved with that. So sometime here in the near future or our emails and everything will change and the dkcoks.org website will switch to .gov. Uh, that will both web, addresses will work for a year or two as we transition through that and both email addresses for all the staff will work as well but that comes with a number of protections uh, that we don't have now through the .gov domain uh, as far as uh, email filters and protections and things like that from scammers and and different things so uh, sherry and her team has looked at the options and we she felt like that would be the best way to, uh, another additional way to protect us from, from uh, you know, the ransomware and the hackers and everything that's out there trying to get into our, our system. So that will be coming around shortly. Uh, Sewer District number three was inspected by KDHE a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we're proud to report that they had no uh, issues out there that uh, Paul Frederick, you know, our operator met with them and they went through everything and there were no deficiencies, so uh, we're proud to be able to report that. Uh, last week, we had the construction meeting for the uh, jail, and I was looking at my list of things that I provided, and the majority of those things are, having been two weeks now, have, have changed tremendously, but uh, the poles out in the old parking lot have been removed. Sidewalk that I said is going to be started on has been completed. That access is the back of the east side of the uh, the facility, the jail. We did close the front entrance temporarily uh, last week, but it's been reopened now and can be accessed either from the east or west parking lots. Uh, the electricians are still pulling wire and that's, we're having an issue uh, getting some wire. They were a little bit short of one type of wire they need, 40,000 feet or something. They have had that order. They're telling us it won't be here till the middle of here before then, uh, but it's it's another one of those COVID delay things that everybody's blaming everything on COVID, whether it's true or not. But they're looking all over the nation trying to find a warehouse that has the wire that they need to try to get it in. So we are having some issues uh, with some of the supplies that way. Uh, Accurate Controls has been back working on door locks this week. Floors are finished. Sheetrock is is finished in the jail. They're uh, painting the ceilings and, and finishing things when I walked through there yesterday afternoon, uh, doing some final painting, uh, and they're getting ready to start scheduling training with Accurate Controls the first week of July or so for staff. As far as phase two, uh, the glass should be here and be installed here sometime next week. Masons are touching up on some small projects over there that they're doing, and electricians and plumbers are working on the basement and first floor. 
the top floor has been pretty well roughed in as far as the electricians and the, and the plumbers. I walked up through uh, yesterday morning, I guess it was, Chancy and I walked through and and uh, the top floor is pretty much all sheetrock uh, with all the new walls and stuff. Uh, and we're getting ready to start doing mud and doing tape and seams and mudding, uh, which those guys, they make fast work of it. It's amazing how skilled they can do at that. And uh, they were in the process of finishing up a lot of the sheetrocking in the basement. So uh, main floor was, was a lot of the sheetrock was done there as well. So uh, things are going well. We've got a lot of moving parts. If you drive by today, uh, well, it's probably changed since last night, but uh, the south parking lot, of course, has been removed this week. Uh, the uh, They got into some spots that had some moisture underneath them where the center island uh, in the parking lot was. The water had leaked down over a period of time in there, and there was some wet spots underneath the parking lot. Uh, they, the contractor was removing all that wet stuff. They're bringing back in some bigger rock. And then AB3, and they we're going to get it compacted, hopefully be ready by uh, tomorrow to be, uh, start forming it out and pouring the south parking lot. And uh, within the next week or so, hopefully we'll have the parking lot back, give it three days or so to cure, and then we can start parking out there again and get back to where people can come in the parking lot to get into the sheriff's department and into the jail and, and visit that facility. So things are going well that way. Uh, I did a walkthrough about five o'clock yesterday in the new jail. Um, they are to the point where a lot of the areas they were going to start cleaning today. Uh, the ceiling people were putting in ceiling tiles, uh, which is kind of the final step. They didn't want to put a lot of the tiles in while they were still working above the ceilings, but uh, there's a little wiring going in in the master control room and in booking. Uh, but we're getting down to the last couple of weeks here where things are going to start getting ready to, to plan for the thing. <coughs> and to schedule an open house. I'm hoping, you know, maybe sometime here, right after the first or second week of July, we can get the open house scheduled, uh, do that before we actually move the inmates from the old field over into the new one. That will really give us a, a, a first week or so of the demolition in the old jail. Once it's vacant, will give us a good idea of how that's gonna go and how long it's gonna take to get that out of the way because building the courtroom and that stuff back in will really be simple compared to getting all that magnitude of steel out of there and get it removed. So once we, we get into that, we'll, I'll be able to tell them a bit closer uh, what the time frame will be to be able to get back in the court, courthouse. Question on the wiring problem. Is that going to delay anything, Brad, or can we move in without it? I honestly don't know, Craig. Okay. <laughs> I know they were taking a lot of the wire spools that had smaller amounts on that wouldn't reach in the in the jail part over to the courthouse and utilizing that wire there because there's a lot of smaller runs. Right. Uh, I mean, it makes sense. You don't want to splice them together. There's going to be that particular wire shield and, and where it lays with all the other wires. It, you've probably seen the yeah. wires back there. It's, like, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, they can't splice. I didn't so. like. Well, like I said, I didn't know. If it, you know, gonna, what I was just what I'm asking is going to be. Hold up any of the uh, uh, don't know yet. I hope not. Okay. Yeah. I know the the elevator's not in yet, but then Tom tells me yeah. they don't need the elevator because the top floor is not done anyhow. So they could open the jail up and be able to use it without the new elevator in. So uh, they're they're doing everything they can to get it to a point where we can actually open and utilize the new jail. And so if there's any way that they can, I'm sure they will. Uh, it'll be an absolute last resort if they can't. So. But I don't, honestly don't know which ones are, are utilizing those long runs that are going to be critical. So uh, let's see. October 7th, there is the Economic uh, Outlook Conference in Wichita. Uh, it's uh, from like 7.30 in the morning till noon. And the city managers and the mayors of, of the cities that have city managers in the county have asked if we wanted to send somebody down to that. That's a Thursday morning, so you have a meeting, and I uh, asked Janelle if she wanted to go uh, in my place since we have a meeting. If if anyone you would like to go with her, uh, I think that would be good to attend uh, to, to kind of hear what's going on across the state, especially in these uncertain times as far as our economy. And so I was going to toss that out there to see if one of you would like to go with her. I'd consider going. Um might maybe want to wait a little closer okay. to the day just and see 
if anything is coming up or we can I know we can RSVP and, the... and at least get seats and then if nothing else to know go or take somebody else is there a, a fee i guess to i don't think there's a fee there's just so many they only have so many seats and who's hosting it uh wichita state i believe is hosting it yeah okay we'll go ahead and put in a put in a couple reservations and, okay and, uh, and then we'll we'll see as we get closer you might be able to go so uh, in your packet, you've got a flyer for an employee appreciation a barbecue on on July second. Uh, We're going to have that on the east end of the Civic Center, underneath the awning and underneath a couple tents. And since you guys are are hosting that, and we'd certainly like to see if you're available, you're welcome to come. It'll be from 11 11:30 to 1:30, and hopefully that'll be we'll be able to get as many of the county employees in for that as we can. Now that we're out of COVID, we can do some of that stuff. It'll be nice to be able to have something for, for the staff. So very good, very good. Uh summer paving projects. I talked to Martin last night. I uh, got a, an update from him. They have Hawk Road done. I did drive it uh, the other day, driving up to Clay Center. I intentionally went up on K15 and Hawk Road and they did an excellent job as usual on it. Drives very smooth. Uh, they are currently up on uh what trail road, I think, going up to and they it hit the county line last night. And we're turning around, starting back south, uh, coming around by Curtis Creek and in that area. So he said everything's going pretty good. They're getting about a mile a day, which is normal. Uh, breakdowns have been minimal the last few days at the at the bash plant, so they've been able to really accomplish things. Obviously, it's hotter than the hubs, so you know what out there. So uh, and they're practicing all the the safety precautions they can. Uh, but you know when it's going to be 106 out there today, and they're standing on, they're putting down. 250 to 300 degree pavement that they're they're working around it i think miserable doesn't even do it justice probably but the guys they they were trying to get out there and get it done before we really get hot this summer and guess what he came so murphy's law but uh our hat goes off to those guys they as they do every year they're doing an excellent job and i'm going to make sure that we get as many of those in on uh, july 2nd to the barbecue as well so just the informational on 40 there's kind of the brown spots in the road and so on was there dura patching mm -hmm. they call it dura patching so the oil was working its way up through or no actually they'll go in it's a it's a spot that's starting to develop on the road so we go in we spray oil in that spot and then we put chat down okay. so you don't pick up the oil and okay. uh, gives it a surface to drive on and basically it's a mini chip seal Kind of preservation it's though, exactly just to extend the life of the road. It steals that spot so moisture can't go down and it puts a replaces the driving surface with that chat. Okay. And, and you uh, have a, look, I'm not trying to interrupt here, but when you have a location like that, there's usually breaks in there. It's going to alligator eventually. Alligator out. It's going to turn into a big pot. And it'll get yeah. out. So it keeps so the water out there, of it. It's, it's preventing maintenance. Okay. Things. Doesn't look real nice and it doesn't drive as nice, but it does extend the road, life of the roadway. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so when you hear me refer to dura patching, that's what that is. Uh, the uh, local disaster, if you've monitored at the state level, you know that the governor's uh, disaster declaration was not renewed uh, earlier this week or last week. And uh, I think there's a lot of politics going into play there, which is sad, but at any rate, your disaster declaration that you passed for Dickinson County is still in place and is still there indefinitely. We need to keep that in place at this point because we stu still do uh, have the potential to request testing supplies and, and things of that nature from the state uh, that we can get from them at no cost as long as we have a, a declaration in place. So if somebody asks why we don't have a haven't let ours expire or, or rescinded it, that's why we're we're not out of the woods. I think we're I think we're out of the woods, kind of looking back at the woods, if you will. Uh, but just out of precaution, we want to keep it in place for a while. It doesn't there's no negative side to keeping it in place. It doesn't cost us anything. Other than if we didn't have it in place, we could potentially have to buy all those supplies. So, uh, met yesterday with the new man, Abilene City Manager for the first time. Very impressed. Uh, he uh, he and I met with Chuck and the staff up at the EDC and talked about a few things going on. One of the things that he said that he has been uh, given as a priority is the Northwest Corridor uh, that we've talked about, as you know, for years. Old 40 and uh, the the bypass and out on on uh, towards Fair Road. So 
uh, he was going to be scheduling a meeting with their engineer to start doing some strategic planning for that area and and uh, get our team together and working together on what might be the best option for their industrial park and and the the avenue getting out there to it that we can work together on so hopefully we can continue to progress that uh, that project so the last thing I had we didn't really get to talk about it in the work session but you know we talked about a the premium pay, pay option for county staff. Uh, Craig and I talked about it a little bit on the during our long tenure drive to Southwest Kansas. And uh, one of the things, you know, the one I think we I would suggest, you know, and I talked about it is since one of the four criteria that we can use our relief fund for is to pay the premium pay for county staff that dealt with things at that point. Uh, what we would suggest is, is rather than doing something that we talked about earlier, that would be on the pay plan and perpetual then, and we'd have to pay four years to come. Uh, I would recommend that we do a one-time uh, stipend, if you will, for each county employee that hasn't gotten a bonus, which would be EMS Health Department already, uh, that would be in the ballpark of $1,000 uh, once taxes are removed. So we'd be looking at about $1,300 a bonus to each county staff member. So they'd actually have roughly $1,000 in their pocket once it, it's all done. Uh, I don't have the total number on that. I think it's around nine and given it to me and I'd ask her for a different number and I hadn't got it before since I came directly up here this morning. But I think we're looking at around $140,000 to do that. Uh, the money is in the relief money and, and so we can easily afford it. I think that would go a long ways to help. Uh, you know, we talk about other agencies are given bonuses to retain people and attract people. And this is one of the few opportunities we have the opportunity to do uh, from our standpoint, because we typically don't do that type of stuff. And, and I think it would be money well spent. Uh, we'd get a lot of mileage out of that with our staff. And it'd be, it'd certainly be nice for some of them to, to receive that if, if that's something you'd be agreeable to. And this may be off the, the mark here, but it's saying like the federal government was. Then none of the capers and stuff would be held withheld out of that. I, if, but it's a bonus. It's, it's not a. It's not on your salary. It's a sustained career performance, whatever you want to call it. Uh, when I was working for the government, you know, we got a bonus. It, it wasn't nothing for our. Did you income tax and that right, yeah. That but, could be. I don't know. Yeah. I, I could. Be. So you know, your thirteen hundred dollars may be a little higher than what you know. Cause it, so I wouldn't think. It, I wouldn't think if it's that kind of a deal with capers that come out of it that you. I don't know the answer to that right offhand. Probably Janelle could check into that yeah. though, because well, Diane would know off the top of her head. Diane, yeah. too, yes. good question. Yes, you wouldn't have because it's not part of your salary. Right. Yeah, obviously income tax would have to be paid. Right. So it might be, income tax might be a little lower than that if, if we're not taking yeah. keepers and that stuff out. But we can figure yeah. that out. But you're trying to let them net a thousand. What you're trying to do? That's that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, the there's something about that thousand dollar that if it rather than eight yeah. hundred fifty or seven ninety nine. You say a thousand nine ninety nine psychologically means a whole lot more. I, you know, uh, that that was my target. You know, well, I think it's something we have the ability to do um, within the parameters of, and it's kind of consistent with what some other entities are doing. Yeah. So, well, it's kind of a way to use the money to put it back in the economy. Yeah. Well, it does. I mean, it's it's a, it's a stimulus. I mean. People are going to spend it. That's why we're giving it to them. So, okay. If that's something, we probably need to have a motion. If that's something you wanted to approve, to I assume, wouldn't we? Yeah, so that the auditor knows that it was approved. So, I'll make that motion, Lynn. Okay, we have the motion. And I assume that would be to target the thousand dollar, whatever oh, that is. Right. Okay. I'll go ahead and give the second. And as far as discussion, I think the only thing is a little bit what the discussion was to um, you know check just to make sure the proper way of doing it as far as what's withheld and how it's done but yeah. conceptually but this gives you a little bit of leeway um Hopefully the, the numbers better. are a, a little bit different than that but kind of within the parameters we discussed the target a thousand but if it's 999 i don't think anybody can squat no i don't either you know and there's going to be some that are going to vary a little bit so okay so we've got the motion and the second. Uh, any other discussion or question? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay, Doug. 
Well, we're working on the uh, tax sale, so we're in the process of preparing those pleadings. And as soon as we have those ready, why uh, then I'll uh, let you know that we're ready to file that with the court and move that one forward. The second thing is that uh, Dickinson County is part of the eighth judicial district, which is Marion Moores and Gary and Dickinson. And I'm on the judicial selection committee, and there will be uh, two judges that positions will be filled that we'll be working on in um, August and perhaps a little bit later. Uh, and that's throughout the district. And it, it, it does not affect either of the two judges that are assigned full time to Dickinson County, which would be Judge Sexton and Judge Collett. But uh, two of the other judges have retired. One of them is uh, Stephen Hornbaker. And uh, so as soon as uh, uh, that committee meets and we have more information, I'll share that with the uh, with the board but we're going to be meeting in august to fill those positions that's all i have and each county has a lawyer and non-lawyer member the county commission appoints the non-lawyer member um and that is kevin harris kevin harris, kevin harris yes for whatever reason, I want to say Brian or change. <laughs> you looked at me like I. <laughs> well, I knew you'd know. You'd know, Craig. But but um, but then what they meet is with the other uh, counties that are part of the judicial district, and then they make a recommendation, and usually turn in two or three names to the governor to um, to make a decision there. So yeah, I'm exactly correct. Okay. Well, thanks for being a part of that and the update. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I'll go on to notices and communications. Uh, Craig had mentioned earlier the email that would receive regarding um, trying to encourage people to slow down in the safety aspect as far as the driving down there by the Harrington Lake area. We also have and this is more of a bookkeeping item from the Kansas Insurance Department, and it's a request that we need to. Um, encourage Dixon County Fire to District 2 and they need to submit their financial statement and so Brad I'll have you uh, or Barb whoever want to I'll take, it. take I'll care talk of to them before so. and we'll we'll follow up on that that's all I had did anyone else have any comments that they had received from the public or any notices might highlight the work session Okay, and in the work session, thank you, Craig. In the work session, we did um, uh, continue to go over the budget process of that. We're hearing from the uh, department heads of what some of their needs are. Um, you know, lots of things have remained very stable and constant um, that what we're hearing from the elected officials, and yet there are some unknown areas as far as trying to analyze and consider what will be the cost of operating um, the county and the individual departments and elected officials, uh, their areas of expertise. Um, you know, what's that gonna look like come January, 2022, and we make these decisions in advance, um, but we are, and we heard um, from the clerk and register of deeds, also the sheriff's department, and then also the uh, district court. So one other in there. Treasure. Treasure, yes. That, and we started off with Leah Hearn and um, she was up here today. Okay, we'll go ahead and move on. We do not have any unfinished business. We did have a couple of other items that we added to our agenda. The first one is to consider a resolution for Dixon County. Um, and Dickinson County previously was not part of the Kansas Rural Opportunity Zone. And Brad, do you want to kind of give a little bit of a summary of what that is and the benefit that it has for Dickinson County and potentially for some of our residents? Yes, the uh, the Rural Opportunity Zone is a program that is put in place by the state of Kansas with the sole intent of bringing our, our youth and uh, professional trades back to Kansas to work. And so I'll use one of my kids, for example. Uh, they move away, they get out, they just get out of college, they've all got their specialized interests and, and professions, and they move away. If one of them would be willing to move back to Dickinson County, establish residency here and take on a job 
uh, working in particular trades, uh, they can apply for uh, some funding to help uh, reimburse them for some of their uh, college uh, uh, debt. And so it, it uh, provides you up to a certain amount. I think it's 10 or $15 that can be, you can glean from the state for coming back into the into a county that's been approved as a participant. And the state has money that they can provide. If we wanted to put money into that program, we could also have a match to provide where that particular individual or applicant could get money from both the county and the state. Currently, we're not pledging any money to it. Uh, the state does have so much they put into each for each county, uh, but to get the program started and at least have it available for people, we need to pass a resolution to participate in it. That's what this is. And it's to, in some ways, encourage people to come back to rural areas. And before um, we were not under, we didn't qualify. Right. And, and now we do, but for example, too, and that's a good example you gave Brad, um, but had someone from the medical profession one time mention that they wondered about that and they had a student loan debt and so this was maybe an additional incentive to factor in if they would come back to Dickinson County and um, so so it really helps as far as a recruitment tool um, you know for people that are um, considering locating here and that's one of the discussions you hear often is, you know, how can we retain the youth and have them interested, but also job opportunities to keep them in the area. Um, this would also be managed by the EDC office. So it's another one of the functions that they, they've taken on to help people with their applications. And as you said, again, it's a, it's a good tool for them to utilize the additional tool in the toolbox to help attract people. So. Okay. And the resolution number on this? Oh, six. One seven two one. So, is there a motion to adopt those? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll second. Okay, so we have the resolution zero six one seven two one, and this is um, to go ahead and uh, have us participate in the state of Kansas Rural Opportunity Zone program. Any other discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries, and I have signed this, but we also have lines for uh, all commissioners to sign. We'll go on to the next item that we added to the agenda, and that was to consider an application for real property tax relief. For, uh, and what is the name on that, Brad? Uh, Fran Amidon, A-M-I-D-O-N. -A okay. And that's a formality we need to go through and they had a, a residence that was destroyed by fire and so they no longer were able to live in that residence and this is, gives them uh, property tax relief for that particular circumstance. Is there a motion to uh, grant that to this um, qualified incidence? I'll make that motion. Second. We have the motion and the second. And I will mention this was at 1840 3500 Avenue, Fran We do have the motion second. If there's no other questions or comment, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And this is something too that requires our signature. I'll see if there's more than one spot. I think it teams all three of you as well. Mm -hmm. I think there's just one place for us to sign. It does have a picture here. and. Um, it's obviously destroyed. It was destroyed, yes. Mm -hmm. Badly, so. Thank you. Okay, the next item we have on the agenda, it's an executive session for non-elected personnel. And this would include um, our county administrator. And then, Doug, if you would stay for that. And what is the length of time you'd recommend? About 20 minutes. And I would recommend maybe keeping Morgan because I think she might have a little input. Okay. If she doesn't mind. Okay. I'd be okay. glad to add her to that. And so, is there a motion to do that? I'll make a motion. Second it. We have the motion and the second that we go ahead and enter executive session for non-elected personnel. 
for 20 minutes and we'll start this um, at um, 11.43. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we uh, completed executive session. At this time, I'll make a motion that we return to regular session. I'll second that. We have the motion and the second to return to regular session. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We're back in regular session. Um, there is um, no announcement or any discussion to take place as far as the executive session uh, is for non-elected personnel and we completed our discussion and update. Is there anything else to bring before the commission? Will we adjourn? We have the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, we have the motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, we're adjourned.